Oh. Yeah, who wants to talk about Herman Melville? Shut the f*** up! This book is billed as a novel, but really it's sort of like a collection of various texts like histories, letters, anecdotes, excerpts from Herman Melville and other writers. And all this material is being mulled over during the course of one night by the narrator, Michael Mills, who holds himself up in his attic and contemplates two questions. One is, as a physician, why does he choose not to practice medicine? And the other question concerns his brother, Carl, who kind of descended into lunacy and violence and ended up committing a murder and getting executed for his crime. He's pondering these questions overnight in his attic, his attic, his house being like this ship that he's sailing on, the ocean being inside his head. The subtitle of this book here, which comes from the word teratology, I think the Greek root is the science of the study of monstrosities and malformations. And this book uh, itself is a kind of a mutated form. It's fragments of history and literature interconnected through time. It's like the craft of this book is turned inside out and we get this exploded view. It's in these arrangements that you get these synchronicities. That's the art of this book here. Uh, this cross-pollination of imagery where, for instance, you might see a tornado that threatens the childhood home of the narrator, kind of morphing into an image of a water spout that is threatening a ship. Childbirth morphing into the image of a sailor falling into a dead whale as they're trying to harvest oil. Whale smashing into ships being like this book itself in splinters. And the title of this book, Genoa, being both the city where Christopher Columbus came from, as well as being part of the anatomy of a sailboat. It's almost as if Metcalf took the all these primary sources and created indexes out of them and then lined them up to see where the synchronicities fell, and then pierced through the fabric of each, like with a needle or a harpoon, in the strategic spots. Once everything lines up in a certain way, this text here is almost like an instrument that he can play like in a down sweep and ring out like these really bizarre, haunting, strange chords in this three-dimensional space, or he can come back up on the upsweep and just pick out certain strands. You figure chance is a big part of it, and Metcalf, I believe, stated that he goes more by his own instinct to guide him. But to talk about the elephant in the room here with regards to Metcalf is to speak about his relationship with Herman Melville. He was Herman Melville's great-grandson, and even though that's not explicitly stated in this book, Genoa, just knowing that fact about him kind of knocks you back an extra level and telescopes you out into this almost four-dimensional reading experience where you see the arrangement and sifting through of all this material is a way for Metcalf to exercise the ghost of his ancestor and to make some sense out of his own personal history. This is where Metcalf puts the third law of motion into effect by connecting all these seemingly disparate fractured elements and creating the illusion of an actual birth taking place on the page. It's as if he's creating the question and simultaneously answering it at the same time. Therein lies his genius. That's been my look at Genoa by Paul Metcalf. Hope you guys enjoyed the review and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.